What's up, guys? Classic Life is back. Yes, that's right. The beautiful podcast that Sarth and I started called The Classic Life, which is a podcast about everything that has to do with Classic WoW, is back. Today, we talked about Seasons of Discovery with not just Sarth and I, but with Hammer Dance. I know you guys have probably heard of him on YouTube, and if you haven't, he makes phenomenal Seasons of Discovery content right up there with Scotty J, and we love this guy. So we got him on the show for part one. We're going to do a part two tomorrow or the next day. We do it live on Twitch on both Sarth's and mine channel, so check it out. And uh, you'll see Hammer Dance on there again, okay? All the links for everybody's Twitch and YouTubes are in the description. We hope you like it. I tried to equalize the audio. It's kind of hard because I'm loud as fuck. And, you know, Hammer Dance is quiet and Sarth is Sarth. So I had to, like, go through and, like, you know, fuck with this stuff. But uh, we hope you enjoy it. Hit the comments with whatever. We didn't really... There's no timestamps because it wasn't really, like, agendaed. We were just talking about the classes and stuff. Tomorrow will be the deep dive and a tier listing and stuff like that, which will be really fun to do. Um, hope you enjoy it. Peace. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Classic Life podcast, where we go over everything classic in video gaming, mostly obviously World of Warcraft. Today, with the announcements or the news on Season of Discovery, we're going to break down as much as we can moving into WoW Classic and Season of Discovery. And we are joined by a very special guest here, Hammer Dance, who has been making a ton of content on Season of Discovery. Can you go and introduce yourself and welcome to the show? What's up, guys? Uh, I'm Hammer Dance. Yep, I decided to uh, start getting my Warcraft channel off the ground with Season of Discovery, um, and it's working out. I really enjoy making the content. I think Season of Discovery is like a super cool uh, thing that Blizzard is doing, and it's the perfect time to kind of jump in and, and learn all this stuff with everybody. Yeah, you've been breaking down literally every single class which I think is is great for people that want to know all of the new loot, all of the new runes, um, what is going to look good on each of the classes, what are things that might not be necessarily as good on each of the classes. So there's, there's a ton of things that's coming out, and there's going to be a lot of class reworks that are really changing the way we're going to experience classic. So it's going to be pretty fun. Crix, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great, brother. I'm excited to be back here doing this. I'm excited to hang out with the Hammer Dance. I've been watching this stuff for I've been watching this stuff for before he was even doing this stuff. When he did a lot of this uh, hardcore, like he used to do the immersive ones where you just be relaxing, playing the game, and that was you know obviously the whole point of hardcore. Yep. In my opinion, was the is the peacefulness in the world. And then he popped out with these randomly, and I was really happy. When the first one I saw was this one right here, and I was like, oh okay. And he just started <laughs> spamming them, and I'm loving it, man. I am. But yeah, I can't complain. I'm excited for seasons of discovery. I'm very excited for it. <laughs> I think yeah, a lot of people too. are excited for it. I just did not expect it at all. I think nobody did. Like we were at BlizzCon, the stars were sitting right next to me, Jordy and you know Showback and a bunch of other people, and we were expecting a classic plot. We expected Cata, they said it. We expected retail expansion, they said it. And then we were like expecting something with classic. I don't know what it was, but we did not expect this one. That was yeah. nobody expected this. I don't think, like at all. Nobody. We knew the name. All like I we found the out that yeah, we found out the name yeah. a few days before. So we were kind of like, oh, discover something. It's going to be something new. <laughs> and uh, this is definitely new. It, it's oh, definitely, so you guys knew new. the name before? Sarth knew the name. He got the email or something wow. from somebody, and then it kind of just spread name, around. And, and I did a good job. I didn't yeah. tell anybody. You I didn't, didn't even tell, tell me. You. I didn't even Someone tell else you. told me. I didn't, I didn't tell Jordy. I like was in a car ride on the way to Blizzard, and I literally didn't. Jordy got so mad at me. He was like, why <laughs> was you just tell me? I was like, I don't know, man. I don't think they were supposed to send it. Uh. And then there was a second email that was like, oh, by the way, we weren't supposed to say the name in that email, so don't say it. that to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can trust the Sarth with the knowledge. We'll just beg it was, out of him. I was time. proud of myself. <laughs> um, but I, I, I had some inklings. I knew what to expect. I knew we were going to get a new version of Classic World of Warcraft. Uh, I knew that we were going to have like reworks, class reworks. And I didn't know what extent. And I think the extent is much further than everybody really expected. And, and even more way further initially when it was first announced than people kind of wanted until the deep dive. Like I, even I was a little bit nervous until the deep deep dive and until I played it and once I got to actually play the game I was like this is the sickest thing ever this is so cool so like the very first initial announcement was like worrying you're like are they gonna do it okay and I think they're they're gonna do it right but hammer Dance, what did you think of the initial announcement announcement like what were your thoughts on this all as we're leading into season of discovery yeah so I uh like you guys I was not expecting it at all I was actually just eating eating lunch watching it on my couch and when they announced it and like said what it was, I had to stand up. I was like, he was what? like, oh, what YouTube! is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I uh, 
personally, I, I, I right off the bat was excited. I was like, you know what, this is exactly um, like kind of what we need because I, I have this this theory that I'll share with you guys that like I have for the past like month I was actually arguing with a friend about this, but I think that the best way for them to do a classic plus is seasonal, mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is because. If they didn't do it seasonal and it was a permanent permanent server that went on for like three, four years, kept going, in my opinion, it would just turn into like retail 2.0 um, because that old content would become irrelevant, which is like when you do seasonal content, right? Like maybe Classic Plus next year or the year after is different than Season of Discovery. It's still Classic Plus. It's different, different new content. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so that like, I don't know. That's how I feel about it. I feel like this was like the best way to do something like this because... Um, it keeps everything relevant, keeps everyone like playing at the same time together. Like, I don't know. What do you guys think about that theory? I like I it. I think that this season of discovery is like a beta for classic plus. I think we're going to go to BlizzCon next year and be sitting in those same seats and they're going to be like, guys, you guys like seasons. We did some changes. We're going to make it better. Here's classic plus. That's my I don't know if we'll get like a different classic plus. I know that's like a, a very like common thread going around the internet. I think this is like not a necessarily a beta, but it's like testing out what all we all like. And then if things are very like if people get attached to different aspects of season of discovery, that can roll over into the next season. I think in general, I think their their tendency right now is leaning towards seasonal, like you were saying. And I think it's like just thinking about the game in a seasonal aspect. So what is the next version? It's going to have a different gimmick or a different thing. And so it's always this fresh take on the version of World of Warcraft Classic. I think time gating it or like level gating it is something that is amazing in the essence of we're getting a lot of new stuff. So having everybody just rush to level 60 and then figure it out is kind of gonna like be relatively overwhelming. And you also wanna be able to test out all the different classes. So I think level gating it is really nice. We're gonna go straight up to 25 in like one play session. And then you'll know how good that class is and you'll try out different ones. They've also, they're gonna have to do like a ton of, a ton of balancing because things are just like, all over the place but yeah. i th i think this seasonal is a really really good way of doing it and i think it's a lot better than the first season i think season of uh mastery was something i wasn't super hyped about outside of our road to ragnaros hardcore run this is something that's like new and if we weren't gonna get like just a fresh this is like what i think is is kind of necessary that video is just 720p. I yeah, literally I streamed it's just in 720. It's background stash. So the, I'm just gonna play for me watching the background from the BFD raid that he did. We all did it, but he Sarth was actually able to stream from there. So this is just his run. I'll bounce back and forth between his POV and like Guzus and uh everyone else that was there doing it, just to have some background stuff. Yeah, I was able to test this out for the very like this literally minutes after the the live announce we had to like run. I had to run to like from one end of BlizzCon to the other to get over there and set up to be hilarious. able to test this out with like the devs that made it. So like Agron is in here, Tim Jones, Dara Diba, Morgan, um, like a lot of them are in it. And then S Fan, Guzu, and Sony wasn't with us. Uh, Andy, Fanny was. Yeah. yeah, this is like a really, it was the first, this was the first time anyone got to experience it. And after the announce, this was like great, figuring everything out. It, it gets me very, very excited. There's a lot of Easter eggs that they have within the raid alone, but like a lot of like little things, little aspects that are really fun and they add some flavor to classic that wasn't necessarily there before, but still feels very classic World of Warcraft. Well, this, that's a good segue because like, how do you guys feel about the, that? So obviously for those that don't know or are living under a rock, they're going to cap SOD at level 25 and there's a 10 man raid, which is only going to be a BFD so far. How do you guys feel about it being BFD? How, how do you feel about it? Not minus of how the raid felt. There's three bosses open, but like uh, seven bosses total when it launches. How do you feel about it being BFD? What was your thoughts when they first said that? Um, hey, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I I agree with it being BFD, and one of the main reasons being that it's in Ashenvale, um, and it's like a contested zone, right? So it kind of is like the first zone where like Horde and Alliance are going to be meeting, and it kind of synergizes well with like the world pvp event that they're creating there um and like ash and veil vale is just to me at least I've, I've been playing you know since the beginning of wow like when it was actually vanilla um like ash and veil vale and and bfd are just like super iconic 
Uh, and, and BFD actually is one of those dungeons where I feel like you either love it or you hate it. And there's some people who actually hate BFD and I know people like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a good choice specifically because of the zone, um, because it is large, right? So it can feel like a raid, you know? Yeah. Arthur? Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I think one thing that's good for them to do, I think this was actually a good choice. I was nervous about it at first, um, is to have some of the raids while you're leveling be reworks of places that you have experience but it's like a completely different way of dealing with something that you have experience like this first boss is baron at uh, aquanus and he's usually i believe a horde only quest mob mm -hmm. um and so he's a boss and like just knowing that he's he's a baron like baron Geddon in molten core they added like some mechanics to it that are very similar where one person gets a debuff that would be like the bomb quote unquote right um and they added even more mechanics but like i, I like the idea as a min maxer of them adding mechanics it makes the game fun as well for me but having this be like very reminiscent of like a the older version of the game right like you're still experiencing new raids but it's in the old world i think that's nice because i think it's cool because i'm everyone's excited for like a scarlet monastery raid and then from there though then they're building out like completely new raids and new dungeons and new zones and like it trickles in with like familiarity with the new and then you get fully new i i'm I have the weirdest hopium because I'm getting really excited about it all and yeah, getting yeah. really, really hyped. Um, and I, I, I think there's things definitely that are not necessarily all good, but I think giving us these 10 man early raids and they're on a three day lockout uh, is going to be nice. And you don't have to know life. You don't have to know life season of discovery, At right? All. Like you're level season 25. Of dads. Yeah, season exactly. of dads, yeah. <laughs> Did you see that video? No, that I'm going to show it right I, now. I, yeah. 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 The season of dads one is it's going around today and it's really really funny um it's really good it's made by ai but it is that's what it is though like at least at, at the earlier levels it's season of dads but at the the max level i think there's going to be a lot of min maxing i think there's going to be a lot of like speed running and a new meta and all of this craziness that you can play with while everyone else doesn't have to follow the meta anymore like no one else is forced to follow the meta yeah right I, kind I, I do of, have a question oh, for ahead. either one of you guys, um, since you both got to play um, at BlizzCon. With the addition of like all the new, new abilities and, and the runes and all that stuff, um, does it feel different than playing Vanilla WoW? Because you know, like if you're playing Wrath Classic, right, and you're playing Classic Era, they still they both feel very different. Um, does it still feel like Classic Era, or does it feel more like Wrath of the Lich King? Mm, from me, it definitely felt more like Wrath because I was playing. I, I made a Warlock, as everyone knows, and I was in meta. That's like the biggest tale. Yeah. Not just was I in meta, but I'm meta with Chaos Bolt Incinerate and spells that you normally wouldn't get. It also felt really. Some of the classes felt feels more retaily. It definitely doesn't feel like class. The only thing that felt like honestly, the only thing that feels about Classic Era vibes is the fact that we're in BFD and Ashenville, and right. we're level twenty five, and we're leveling in those zones. If I'm being honest, which I don't mind, I'm I'm classic, but I'm I'm, I'm I like retail too, so I don't care what it, which as long as it's fun. My biggest thing against classic and retail is I, is the retail graphics don't really speak to me. I like this like, you know, it's like kind of really cartoony and like you know I, that's what mm -hmm. I don't like. But I it didn't feel it definitely felt more like Lich King. A lot of some of some of these classes feel a lot like Lich King. Mage felt a lot like a retail with all their new stuff because they incorporate okay. a lot of the runes are are Lich, Lich King runes or you know future spells they get from Lich King retail. But it was hard I not it's hard to think of classic why i'm in meta you know right that's what yeah. i figured yeah some classes feel way more f like way further from the classic world of warcraft than others like rogue and warrior both feel very similar to classic wow early on um especially as you're waiting on your energy you have like rogue dps you're probably like there's a couple specs but like if you're running the mutilate build it was basically that was replacing backstab and you're still using your your finisher as slice and dice and then sometimes being able to use in venom but if you were playing like something like Crix is saying like a warlock tank that's a full rework that's a completely different thing and so the fights felt classic like um but i feel like some of the classes definitely feel different or feel like more like wrath with the more abilities but it 
still felt like the magic for me felt like it was the magic of classic just with abilities right if you're normally level 25 i was trying to explain this to someone but if you're normally level 25 you have one ability and yeah. maybe a second yeah. one yep. and, yeah. if you're and lucky if you're level, yeah exactly and if you're level 60 as a warlock you have two things to do one you throw up a fucking curse of recklessness or something that's it, all right throw that on every target and mm -hmm. then sit there and press shadow bolt right like that that's might be the classic feeling but that is a shit feeling excuse yeah. my language but like that's no, not fun me. um so being able to play the classic grades and hit for the classic amount of damage while now having like maybe three to four abilities you can use is so much more fun than being able to just sit there and like you have one thing to do the only class that had an actual rotation in classic was warrior and warrior had to still fill some of their like dead space with things like hamstring to try to process wind fury right yeah. um most of classic really doesn't like you you realize when you're raiding you really don't have that much to do most of classic is like open world and experiencing things but in raids there's very few abilities you get to utilize so i think this really lends itself to raids will be a lot more fun the pvp is going to be off the fucking wall it's going to yeah. be wild um but your actual experience playing the game is going to be more fun because it's a lot more interactive yeah, Warlock's right. got like a rework, complete rework. There's nothing that you're doing the same pretty much at all. Like you're still gonna be, yep. you're still putting up curse, but like it, it was l quite literally like a complete class rework, which obviously Thank like. Thank gosh, you would never yeah, want to do that. Mage got a good you rework quit. too. Like there's a couple, I, I know there's some classes that feel like they didn't change much, but Warlock definitely probably changed the most out of everything. It's like, it's it's completely backwards. Even your Shadow Bolt spits five Shadow Bolts out instead of one. Like there's like, there's <laughs> the only thing that you do the same is fucking put a curse up. And corruption is the same. Everything else has changed. It's kind of crazy to me. Yeah. My mind's blown on it, to be honest. Look at exactly what Agron just said. He said, I can tell from starting from level one, it's a slow burn to get to the point where, where Crix you're describing. And mm -hmm. even then, outside in the world, it feels very classic. Um, obviously, biased opinion, but I, I, I felt that too. It's like, we're level 25. And I was saying this earlier is like the time gating is really good because it, it trickles us down to like still feeling like the very classic world whilst also not overwhelming us with these new abilities. But on top of that, the, the magic, I think this is like going to be something that I'm getting way too stoked on is like, I always like finding new things and we're going to like, be like, is that little rock over there? Is that new? And you click on it and it turns into like a fucking octopus or something yeah, and, yeah, you know? yeah. and then that drops like a rune and it's like a raid boss out randomly in the open world that spawns once every like third blue moon or something. It's going yeah. it's it's like, to be addicting it, finding these runes. Yeah, because this is the hype. The hype of this entire if I season is, we already know we're speed levelers. We're hit that's eight ten hour done leveling right, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna speed run. We're gonna clear. The, we're gonna speed level. We're gonna clear the raid, and then just I know all three of us in here and more people in chat are gonna just. I'm not sleeping until I find like meta, like all my runes. I want yeah. obviously I can't say all the runes because I don't know, and I think that's what's the best part of it is we don't know how long it takes to find all the runes, which is a very good. I have a good question for you guys. I'm going to answer it first though. How long do you think it's going to take to unlock all the runes? I, I hope it's like, I hope to God, all the runes are not found in like a day or two. I hope it's like a week and we're like, I finally found it. I feel like it's not going to be because of the internet, but like, you know, yeah. realistically, I think it's going to be a few days, two, two or three days. Um, and then within seven days, there will be like guides and add-ons and things for every single one, just because information spreads so fast, you know, like the, the second one rune is found that's just permanently like everyone is going to know that now the interesting thing is is i was trying to plan this with with some of the guys that when we did the hardcore all-stars tournament but if you do like a if we can put together a like a dueling tournament but like two or three days into into the actual launch because people don't have all the runes so if people hoard or hide where they found these runes early on to have some sort of competitive advantage in something but right after that yes it's all going to be shared uh there's gonna be a billion guides we're all going to make videos on it wowhead is going to data mine every single thing and then the community is going to be like no, I never want to see that. And then they're going to look and read the guide on the data mining anyways. Savages, please. I hope that, I hope things, 
I, I, I'm personally really excited for the idea of a genuine discovery, like finding things out and then coming in to like theory crafting. So once, once we get like where we find all the runes and once we find a bunch of like secret things, and I think there's going to be secrets, like there's a secret apparently in Dragonflight that I think was found, discovered like a month or less than a month ago that was like a mount or something that was in the game since launch. And it was like, there's all these like little, little puzzles that could happen. And I think that's an exciting thing for them to be able to do. But then how this plays out together in raiding situations or in PVP, it's none of it is, is like solved. And Classic is like one of the most solved games of all time. People have been playing this exact version of the game for 20 plus years. So now it's all different. And it's like, how can we do the most out of this? How can we min, maybe not even just min max it, but like, how can I have the most fun? You won't be forced to pigeonhole into something. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll make guides and then someone, hopefully your guild won't force you to play that like unholy DK or something. Sorry, if you didn't want to play unholy DK and wrath, but, <laughs> but I, I think there's a lot of excitement in it. And I think it, it, for me, it felt from playing it, it still felt very classic. And that was the biggest fear. And I think that's everyone's biggest fear. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that the smartest thing in the world that they did was with no PTR, no beta. That was even more smart. When they said, here's, here's season discovery. And they started talking about it. And all of a sudden he closed with no PTR beta November 30th. I think I shit my pants. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. That's like, it's like that's, you'll and, play it at the end of this month. Yeah, because like you get torn because it's like we make content. So it's like all three of us would be like, yeah, dude, if there was, we'd be no lifing it. And then there's no discovery. But like, I right. like that there's none. It's going to be dope. Because instead yeah. of that, it's all frantically people are trying to make content on stuff we don't know. No, all three of us don't. We're just like speculating or big theory crafting or what we, I think, and just like from all the data mine thing from Wowhead, I think Blizzard is just letting people know what they want to know. And that's not even going to change. I think there's everything that's in data mine is going to be like, all right, well, Let's change this up. It's not everything. I like the having the other slots. We already knew that was going to happen, right? But I don't know. I don't think the data mine is always going to be true because they can definitely swap some shit up. Like if people find too much stuff out, they can be like, you know what? Let's let's do I this. I hope they let's leave this. Easter eggs in the <laughs> yeah, in the like, data mining too. Yeah, I don't want everything to be discovered right away. Like I, I don't want everything in the world to be discovered right away. I just hope that back to that topic. I just hope that it takes a while to get some runes. I know there's a chance that it's day three and everybody found them all, but between people the internet and videos and you know yep. whatever i think that it, i honestly think it's going to be found quick i just hope it's not leave some because that's going to be the excitement of it this first week of the seasons is probably going to be the most fun i think a lot of us have had playing world of warcraft even more than like classic launch tbc i'm more excited for this than the tbc launch i'm a tbc andy like the, the lich king launch kata coming up for those who are excited about kata this is like different this is next level this is a a change on a game that we've been playing for fifteen thousand years you know yeah and I, I think that the mass amount of discovery that's going to go on and like combine that with what Sarth was saying is that it still has that like uh, vanilla, like classic magic. Um, you're right. Like it, it's going to be the most fun. And I've played, you know, thousands of hours of, of Warcraft this year. Um, and it's going to be the most fun that I personally that I know I'm, I'm going to have, you know, ro rolling around with all your friends, like even after you. So you're going to hit 25 so fast. Right, you're gonna do the raid. Now you have three days. You're gonna find. You're gonna scour the world for all of your runes. While you're doing that, you can do War Song Gulch. You're gonna be world PVPing. I'd be you know, like I said be before. So fun. Yeah, and if I'm playing Ret Pally, you know, I'm finding some random feral to just run around with me, um, <laughs> and it's gonna be an absolute blast. Like I, I, I really can't wait for it. I'm hype. What is? I meant to ask this in the beginning. What are you maining, Hammer? Um. So I'm, I'm usually a Lock fanboy. Like? Yes. Good to yep. answer. But, I'm a warlock fanboy, but I, there's just I knew there was me, a but. <laughs> yeah, there's part of Traitor! me that really. I know, I know. I kind of, I kind of want to try Red Pally, but I don't know. It's gonna be a game time decision. Yeah, you're like, really on Paladin, dog. You are dude, on I'm, Red I'm Pally's nuts. You looked, yeah, you I know, but god rooms? damn, it's insane, man. It, it, we should talk about this after we you say who you're remaining. We should, because um, I don't know a lot about some, Paladin, so maybe you can break it down runes. for me. There's some runes that literally I think need to be reined into into reality because they are in the realm of that's crazy and that'll be crazier at higher levels but like it's so so strong um there's there's a few classes in specific but like there's a very very few runes but but Crix, i'm assuming you're going to be playing a warlock main i'm going warlock mage and then another warlock yeah i want to tank a dps warlock obviously because you can't do both i'm having i'm doing dps with our guild with the with the api guild because he won't let me tank because he wants to do the war the typical like tank tanks 
And then I'm gonna ha- I'm doing a community guild on the lion side where I'll just tank. And then I want a mage, not a healing mage. I don't, I, dude. Tanking and BFDs it should be pretty easy, anyways. Um, I know it's just I want to do it long term. It'll be fun. It's Oppy. Yeah. You can't talk Oppy into doing something he doesn't want to do. You know that. <laughs> or something that's like very suboptimal. Just, yeah, you're not gonna talk Oppy into doing anything that he does not want to do. Yeah. And he's I mean, also a main tank too, so like well, you can't. You know what I mean? It makes he's sense. He's gonna I'm fine. have to run like all of the tanks. Like literally every every one of the fights or or especially towards the higher levels there's going to be so much variation in which tanks are better for which situations Mm -hmm. like warlock tank is is looking to be warlock and shaman tank are probably going to be the strongest for dungeons and trash and there's some bosses like especially if there's like a little Mm -hmm. bit of ads they could be like the best rogue tanks can like hit like a hundred and two percent evasion or, or avoidance at level 60 without other runes being added which is like that's gonna end up being reined in but like rogue tanks on single target bosses that are melee bosses it's just like they're just not taking any damage Warlock tanks aren't they're, gonna be that good at aoe stuff though they don't have anything to help they have a shadow cleave that does like no damage it doesn't cost threat and their taunt is just a single target so we have no way to pull if you aoe and pull threat i can't get it back i got one taunt every 10 seconds besides the 10 minute or but that's it it's gonna be made i think for single every target single global you can searing pain though yeah but uh, spread searing pain on five people the most you can do is like well, not five. Well, say you, yeah, but you're in a dungeon. So say you're in a dungeon and you're pulling three to four or five mobs. You're not going to be able to, it's going to be rough trying to hold that aggro with people unless people are not pumping. I don't think Warlock, I don't think the Warlock tanks were made. They will be able to do dungeons, but in a raid, I don't think they were made to sit there and hold four or five mobs with AOE threat. It's more of a single target thing. Yeah, that's yeah, what, and, can, until later, I think it's a market own. for later for like a Hellfire rune or something with emo aura. You notice there's no emo aura in the game. So like something like that, that's the big fire thing uh, from Lich King. Yeah. The big, uh, big aura. That's what they're known for. Unless you use the big aura, I think that'll come yeah. later. But we're not that great at AOE threat right now. Really? So you're yeah, saying shadow all. cleave doesn't do doesn't do it? It doesn't do that good. Threat? It does like your just your normal threat. It isn't. It's not like a searing pain. It's shadow yeah, cleave it's, is just shadow bolt threat. turned into a melee. So yeah, the most that you can do with it is like take everlasting affliction rune, and then you can have corruptions up on people, and that and shadow cleave that refresh the corruptions. So you can have corruptions rolling on them. But if you do that, you can't take lake of fire, and you need lake of fire because that's boosting your fire damage. So in order right. for you to keep threat, you have to run in or charge on one. You taunt whenever you need it with ten second taunt, and you're just hoping nobody pulls off one searing pain, and your tab searing pain, and your mouse or mousing over however you're doing it. So you you would just use any of the other tanks to be able to do trash. Like there's other tanks that'll be better at AOE tanking than a warlock would be. Right. Yeah, but each one of those hits, each one of those hits with your cleave is a hundred percent extra threat on a normal shadow bolt, right? No, Which the is, cleave is not extra threat. The cleave is just normal. Metamorphosis just a, gives you a hundred percent. Oh yeah, you're talking about the metamorphosis one. Yeah, do. yeah, but it's the, it's really not that the, the cleave itself. People were already pulling from that at the beta in the beta when we we're doing it when I was cleaving. Yeah, but you're always gonna pull right away, like if you're DPSing right away, right? Like you're always yeah. like ev- no tank. Literally, no tank can. I mean, maybe the shaman one that has the frontal cone, but no tank can hold aggro right away in classic. That's like literally like the essence. Uh, you're describing an essence of tanking in classic. That's like yeah. perfect. Yeah, that's why I said people are like, just gonna have yeah. to not DPS even more. I feel like I just I don't think Warlock's gonna be the best AOE tanks. I think you just use another tank that could do it. Better. But you can consistently build that threat very quickly, right? So like you could run in. And you have the searing pains for any of the targets that you're low on threat on, but you're consistently in every global able to hit three. Is it three targets um, with Shadow Cleave? It's not every global. There's a cooldown on it. Yeah, it's a cooldown on it. There's a cooldown on Cleave. There's a cooldown on everything besides searing pain. You can spam, but you'd have to tab or mouse over for searing pain. So you could run in. What's the cooldown on on your new? It was like six seconds, and then your taunt is ten seconds. So you can't even you can't Shadow Cleave that much. That's yeah, that's the problem. Easy Shadow Cleave, and then you just start tabbing searing painting. Yeah, but Here's imagine the threat on that. People are going to still rip off that unless you're telling people, you know how hard it is in a raid to be like, hey, stop DPS for a whole five seconds. Let me get it. You know how it is. And these are level 25 raids where everyone's going to be overpowered with runes. Yeah, yeah, but you take no damage. You could rip the threat on that. But like you'll have a targeted in, in raids, right? Okay, just bear with me. It, let's say we're in a level 60 raid with no new runes other than what we have right now. Mm-hmm. Your warlock tank would go and pick up like six mobs or something over in this corner like and he would build threat while your warrior tank or whatever grabs one mob right here everyone kills the skull as you usually do and then you start aoeing down everything right uh because every class seems to get some sort of aoe also by that time everyone's gonna have most likely a lot stronger aoe and aoe threat but like it's very reminiscent of like 
that's a really like that's something that everything's everyone's missing even paladins even paladins with with consecrate consecrate was so so slow for building threat paladins were obviously literally like not an actual tank in classic and if you ran one they could not generate threat at all but now they get a ton more threat from everything with their new uh with their hand of seal of reckoning mm -hmm. rune and that giving you 80 percent more threat gen from righteous fury being up it's like I'm saying you just use one of those tanks or a feral or something over the warlock tank right yeah you, I'm, I'm, what I'm, saying, that, I'm not though. saying that you can't tank a I'm, i know what i'm talking about warlocks i'm not saying you can't tank aoe i'm just saying there's literally a couple other tanks that could even the shamans could aoe tank better than the warlock can there's this other thing you could just let the warlock do aoe dps and have something else tank those mobs because aoe dps from warlocks gonna be out of this fucking world in comparison to i mean in comparison to probably almost every fucking class besides i think mages are still gonna slap because the rain of fire hellfire combination with incinerate is going to be is absolutely crazy you don't even use like a fire you use it just to put the tick down and then you run in and hellfire with incinerate opening first it's going to be absolutely nut hole aoe damage so you would have the feral the paladin like you said or even the shaman tank do aoe while your warlock just absolutely slaps dps i mean uh, aoe dps in my opinion that's what i think that's what i would like to do because AOE, it's going to be crazy damage with aoe on a warlock yeah, that, that make, completely makes sense to me. I'm just, I, I you know, I, I haven't played um, like you guys did, but I thought for sure after seeing like the Shadow Cleave ability and the 100% threat on meta, I was like, oh, wow, Locks are going to be able to tank trash pretty easily. But I guess I guess they, they are. I guess I what you're saying is there's are. better. I'm, just saying, we're gonna find, saying, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying they're not going to be able to. I'm just saying there's better tanks tank. for it. Yeah, Shaman. And Peril and yeah. Paladin, you just said, right? Paladins are going to be, you don't think Paladins will be able to tank trash? Really, 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 really well? Paladin, your your threat build on trash is is a lot like every other pull would be great. Um, or if you pull really really big, right? But like if you look at BFD, the pulls were like two to five mobs each pull. So uh, eventually, yes. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. You'll usually probably run one main tank and one like cleave tank in in most of these raids and in all honesty you could run with any of the tank combinations at at level 25 the raids like aren't aren't punishing but like we don't really know it's just like literally if you're looking at like the warlock stuff like you could build around that so well for for some of the the higher level things at 25 everything is relatively very easy um it's just dodge mechanics there's finally mechanics which is exciting to me at level 25 because mm -hmm. instead of like i mentioned earlier is like you would have literally one button to do and then the boss just dies right like if we did yeah. any dungeons you just <laughs> you don't even know what what bosses do in dungeons usually right until hardcore came around then you're like you know what let's kind of find out with even in hardcore in the dungeons actually yeah you're still just kind of like just plowing through it without worried about mechanics yeah even in i mean in hardcore raids and like i know the mechanics of most mobs in raids like most because there's like one thing that a mob that a mob could do to kill you and if you didn't do hardcore like you didn't care about that that much but in speed runs like that one thing was something to be worried about and you would always have to be cautious because losing your world buffs was crazy but we're getting world buffs back so that's oh yeah <laughs> how do you like good topic how do you like the world buff at the end of the uh the bfd you want to go over that yeah um you remember what it's called i can uh, look it up real quick something of black fathom i don't actually will a blessing of black fathom no that's Maybe. the that's the first one that's the oh i mean i'm under i'm under wrath i'm stupid um but the the cool thing from this one it gives you like 20 percent movement speed which is wild um that is gonna be i, I think you're not gonna be able to to get it past level 25 or like because there was a mention tim tim jones when we were playing mentioned that you might be able to get like a world buff from bfd and hold it for your level 60 raids i don't i don't know if that's going to be possible at least the the movement speed from it because the movement speed is like that's stronger than like a that's like a swiftness of zanza like 20 percent movement speed is like huge that's big crazy yeah for for speed runs and stuff it'll help you when leveling and it'll be really nice if you were like right as the level 40 bracket is about to be launched you definitely are gonna want to get this world buff and like log your character off with like a bunch of quests ready to turn in or something you know mm-hmm and then you just move fast. I can't remember the buff name. I'm trying to find it. I can't. I find can't it. remember the buff name. Let me know if you find it. Ah, uh, thank you, Black. Boon of the Black Fathom. Oh, Boon Jesus of Black Christ. Fathom. Yep. Yeah. 
There yeah, two percent crit for everything, twenty attack power, and twenty percent movement speed. Um, and then there's another buff in Ashenvale, the Ashenvale Rally and Cry, that gives you five percent damage for two hours. That is that is half as strong as Dark Moon Fair, like which was the strongest buff in like the game, right? Like you would always that was the one you were always excited for was the Dark Moon Fair buff. So twenty percent movement speed, two percent crit, twenty attack power, really nice. And then. Uh, I mean, I guess you're missing out on getting any sort of spell power there, right? Yeah, but the crit is big since... Well, I hated the, the world buffs as a warlock because they didn't really help you much. But now, like, all of our stuff is going to be focused around crit with all of our spells. So I'm a little more excited for this one, yeah. And the movement speed, like you said, is really nice. But yeah, I feel like world buffs kind of are always more towards melee. It's bigger for melee. Yeah. But I, I, I do like the crit. I concern anymore, right? Like, they, I'm pretty sure that it's, like, very conscious. Right now, they're looking at, like, even balancing the the uh, hybrid specs, right? Like, figuring out ways that things will work for both specs. I think something that, that is going to be a weird balancing act is, like, if you're a hybrid spec, say you're, like, a paladin right now as you're watching S-Fan in the background. Um, his judgments, I, I'm not 100% sure on this. Someone can correct me. I believe judgments are, are technically spells. So, like, you need spell hit for that. So, will they figure out a way Way of balancing hit to have it be reacting to both of those shamans and hand shamans in particular especially are going to have the same issue uh warriors with taunts i mean taunts always been a spell and that means you need a ton of threat or a ton of spell hit to make sure it hits so if there's ever bosses that like especially in hardcore where a, a taunt swap was necessary you would literally have to go into uh zg and farm the fishing boss and get the trinket that made it so your spell hit goes up when you're using it right and to make sure that you didn't miss a taunt so i think there's going to be a balancing act i think that's like a prediction of of the whim of my head but like i think there needs to be a balancing act or else there's going to feel really bad for some of these these hybrid specs right so i think world buffs will also translate into them being conscious of it actually buffing all the classes instead of it being like basically useless um right very soon very soon on the next pull s fan literally hits for like 900 damage in one one weapon swing I think those sharpening stones and the mana oil they put in there that gives 2% hit and BFD was the most br brilliant thing they could have ever done. I was Dogs so happy so when good. I said that. I was so happy because I don't know how melee hit is, but casters are absolutely screwed. And yeah, at now, this level. Dude, are you kidding me? It's so big. Like watching this, you know, watching this uh, S fan DPS right now is just, I mean, looking at the damage meter is just. Uh, I can't I, I can't see how this isn't gonna get nerfed. Yeah, but like, also at the no same way. time I feel like there we don't no we don't know way. that everybody else DPS wise in there was doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like right? We don't know. Um, we we don't sure, know if everybody yeah. in there is like pressing their right buttons, right? And he could just be pressing the right uh, buttons. Okay, so Maybe. I'm just, I'm just speculating. Literally obviously has been able to play this because works at Blizzard. Um Agrin is like kind of healing. So if you go to like some of the other polls, Agrin is usually number two on the DPS meters. He's healing as a paladin. He's a paladin that's doing some DPS and healing and still is usually number two below S Van. And then it's usually me or Artemis, who's the, the hunter. Um, I, it is. It's good. Um, Red Paladins are really, really good. Like the, the seal they they have consistent cleave with seal of martyrdom where it's literally permanently consistent cleave that just hits all the time and it procs off of your um, Crusader Strike right now. So you get like five point five and a half hits per 10 seconds if you had a 3.3 speed weapon. I do all of this like calculation. I did it all yesterday. But like all of those hits get basically 90% damage added to them for three targets with the cleave. That's so strong. That's so good. At it looks like he's times. pressing like two buttons too. Like that's it. <laughs> yeah, and and it's just very consistent. Well, he's gonna be seal like weaving too, and and for single target he should have swapped um, seal twisting. Sorry, and for single target he's gonna swap. You're gonna end up swapping runes also, anyways. So like that's gonna be a thing as well. Like the meta is gonna be sw switching your runes within the raid for trash and for bosses for sure. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm just on like some kind of paladin hype train right now. I don't know why, but no, um, no, you're right. You're right because of the dump. Like if you crunch the numbers and if you, it, it is, it is, it is so strong right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm usually a warlock fanboy all the way. Don't get me wrong. I probably still will play lock first, but pally will be my second. Well, talk to me, Trader. second twenty-five. <laughs>
Yeah, Sark, think... what are you? Uh, you're, what are you meaning? What are you gonna do? What's I'm, your plan? I, I'm gonna go hunter first, uh, mm. and then rogue, and then probably rep paladin if they don't change things. Uh, the thing that is really, really good. Um, for for hunter is it's they're showing a lot of support for some sort of like melee stuff which means that that melee weaving will be a thing so much so that that they're even talking about obviously having a full melee hunter build and if that's the thing you might even end up going with like melee or range weaving where most of the time you're doing melee attacks but you would move out for a second to do a shot and then move back in so like so looking to be good i think that yeah i i i think that's going to be the idea there means that there's so much skill that's going to go into the play style for hunters and so the range of the really good hunters and the less great hunters is going to be huge but i think hunters are in a, a place right now i think hunters if you were to like i could literally right now like the boss damage it's like mages if they don't get nerfed paladins and then hunters they're just like so so strong um and and those are like those classes are are so like every class is way stronger than it used to be but those classes are so much stronger that they're like standing above the rest a little bit and i think that it's going to be really fun i think just the the there's i so think hunter is looking really it. good mages is not going to be it's going to they're going to be all right but even mage court we're over stressing because mana issues and our talent yeah, that, that we can go it's i don't think mages will be thing. fire 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 but i think hunters and rep powders are definitely up there warlocks will be up there single target if you, I, how do you guys feel about shadow priest I love Shadow Priest. I'm playing one. It's one of my mains for a long time. And I think that what they got looks really cool, but they're going to have severe mana issues still. And they didn't get re anything really to help them on single target. They got the mines here. They got some stuff that's going to help them in trash packs, but they didn't get a lot yep. of things to help them with single target. And I feel that they're still going to be more of a support role. And they're like forced to take the homunculus or however you say it. Yep. yep. They're still going to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. take that role. They really need like red alert. Priests in general need like red alert mana help. Because, yeah, they got a bunch of cool shit, you know, prayer mending for the, the, the healing side, prayer mending, prayer healing, you know, circle healing. But that's like 45% of their base mana, 69% of their base mana, 35% of their base mana. And so I think priests are in very, very big trouble with uh, with healing, right? Wait, so, I, was, I sent with you something mana in, general. in the Discord. Look at this. If So if the big thing, the big caveat for mages is if they have mana issues, right? But yeah. if they don't and they can play arcane, pull that up. That is 10% hit for arcane spells. This this talent wasn't really something you ever thought about because you never cared about using arcane spells before, right? 10% mm. raw right away for five, one, one talent point for 2% hit. Whoa, that's crazy, right? That That's like busted busted crazy that is so uh, I, it, it I, looks good but where i'm telling you that it's still a worry that we're they're not going to be pumping as hard because with man is a big issue you got to remember that that's the yeah exactly and so arcane blast makes it good mana. but you're not it's arc, it's different arcane blast and lich king it's not the same one because in arcane blast and lich king you can spam arcane blast right or tbc even this lich this arcane blast it's every other arcane spell is buffed and not arcane so your arcane blast isn't even buffed so you get the oh i got to fix your camera sorry you get you get the mana penalty from using arcane blast and you know how in tbc and lich king you just be that four stack and your arcane blast is just fucking chunking and chunking and chunking yep it's yeah. not boosting the damage of your arcane blast you're only boosting damage to other things so you would like it's i think it's mainly for the healing part of it or you can do like am it or something like that but that's where the worry for the mana comes from it's going to depend because level 25 you don't have a lot of intellect the mana there was like even in the shitty gear they gave us it was like 1300 int pool you know what i mean mana pool so that's the worry fire is the exciting yeah. part but that's also a worry with mana the big thing, exactly. The big caveat is is gonna be mana for mage. Um, Paladin and hunter don't necessarily have nearly the same issue with that. Uh, so, especially Paladin. Paladin with Crusader Strike is a four second cooldown. Two percent of your mana is returned on on every one of those. Paladins never go oom. Um. Even healing Paladins are using that. Literally, Trill was using that as a as a holy Paladin, and he never went oom um on like very long fights. It is going to be. He's using Crusader Strike. You're saying? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. As a holy Paladin, and and he was loving it. Started, yeah, he was like, this is. He literally was like, and Trill is like the best. Mr. World of Warcraft. Yeah, Mr. World of Warcraft. He's he's like the most acclaimed World of Warcraft player there is like in the world right and and he literally was like this is crazy this is absolutely cracked just that one ability crusader strike um so yep. so like just thinking about that seal of martyrdom being as as overpowered as it is and then being able to swap between that and divine storm those two things make paladins 
in like their own little little league um and then there's some runes like i feel like there's like i mentioned earlier but there's some runes specifically hunters have have the sniper training rune uh that gives them 30 percent crit just raw 30 percent crit on all of your your shots especially if you're not running if you're not going to run explosive shot which you wouldn't because then you can't use aim shot like not at this level you wouldn't at least right and and you can't even go for like a melee build anything in survival the only points you would go into there would be to boost your raptor strike and mongoose bite but we're it's just we're only level 25 we're very you're going to have a very, very limited amount of your abilities. You have 16 talent points. You, you don't even have most of your cooldowns or most of your abilities. So having some things that give you just like a raw 30% crit, that's, that's really strong. And you it's pair that with that. having like something that gives you a raw 25% damage. And you're like, whoa. So are there, are there a lot of... Um... Uh, basically a lot of instances in this raid where you will be able to just be standing still the whole time we don't know hunter. we don't know uh, so, so, three far, bosses. so far there's a lot of times so the, the big thing is it lasts for six seconds right so if you stand still it'll last for six seconds it'll probably like be like two seconds of standing still so there's there's this brings into like the question of there's a lot of times when you want to position well um this boss in particular has like a knockback with those orbs but you don't need to move very often the first boss also has a knockback that you do need to move every now and then um rips van there and uh, and the third boss, the only time you need to move, excuse me, is when he puts like a trap on the ground. So there's no matter what in classic, if you think about classic raids currently, there's a lot of times where you do just stand there. And if you're a hunter right now in classic raids, your rotation is, is so simple, especially if you're not melee weaving, your rotation is literally like you have an auto shot and then you do an aim shot for three seconds and then you do an auto shot and then you've got multi shot and then you just wait for aim shot. Like... <laughs> Technically, you Serpent Sting in there now because of Season of, of Mastery and the debuff limit. Um, <laughs> now it's, uh, s -Ben just dies again here. Um, but, like, now we have a lot more things going on in the rotation. And even then, there's a lot of times where you can pause yourself and be tracking that. And right as you get the buff for six seconds, then you can move maybe for the next four seconds. And then pause for two seconds to know that you'll, you won't have to move again to get your next buff up. So, um yes absolutely. all while still There's having to pull everything because in classic all you guys did is pull shit you're worthless pretty much yeah, yeah, yeah. and now you guys are gonna well, slap everyone was worthless i mean not <laughs> warriors and rogues right even dude i, I was the no i was i uh, literally peaked out number one rogue world and i was still like 13th behind warriors and that was like in the u.s i was 13th not even in world you like 13th right that was just in the u.s i was still 13th behind warriors rogues rogues were the suboptimal class and i just loved it because i love rogue right like i just wanted to make it work and i did but like realistically in, a, in an optimal speed run or an optimal raid you would only bring one rogue and he's exposed armoring right so like it didn't it didn't we were matter helping. the only class they that help. was good the only class that is good is is warrior back in classic now every class is good which is so much more fun yeah but warrior i'm not gonna say it's bad but um didn't get anything that will like change how it's played fundamentally like these other other classes you know what i mean that's Agreed. my biggest gripe it's because so back in 2019 classic i i main fury warrior um and it was so much fun to be honest but uh i would have done that this time around in season of discovery but that's i feel like every class got such like cool class defining runes and like thing most of them um and warrior got like warbringer you know furious thunder like yeah you can thunderclap and every stance now and stuff but like nothing they got nothing that's gonna change how it's played at least at this level right it's still gonna feel almost like the exact same warrior that you're I, used to my spicy take have... is that warriors are gonna be ass at 25 yeah i've been saying that forever hey, yeah I mean, I... no well i'm glad you i'm surprised that because you and i don't agree on shit so i'm surprised that we all agreed <laughs> on that because everybody's coped out of their minds and they're like it's gonna be the best i think it's gonna be are still up oh there on this end at 60 but at 25 the way warrior scales in classic here, is is so 
weak early on, right? You're going to be mm -hmm. rage starved if you're not tanking. Uh, you don't have things like flurry, which is like so ridiculous. It's, mm -hmm. it's so much. It's attack speed consistently. You're consistently critting anyways. Once you get stronger, um, you're always having infinite rage, so you can use abilities all the time. Like right now, uh, at least Alliance are getting Wind Fury, but early on, the the biggest caveat, and I think Fight Club is going to end up being like some a ton of people complaining, but also a ton of people realizing how good it's going to be. Yeah. Is gonna, is is the big difference is that um we don't have a large a large amount of the warrior toolkit a large amount of the warrior power scaling is is power scaling so like if nothing even happens nothing else changes warriors still at this rate would probably be like i mean they don't really have the cleave that some of the other classes are getting like some real real aoe but warriors would be like still potentially like the strongest like the the power scaling is just ridiculous opening up getting wind fury on alliance and then adding a couple more buttons you can do that will increase your damage or like there's there's one of them uh that gives you like uh, let me go and grab it but one of the one of the runes gives you damage for being higher on on rage right and being above 80 rage and and that's going to be a thing you'll always have above 80 rage basically almost permanently at level 60. um so yeah i think warriors are in this spot right now at 25 where they feel really like behind and left out because you didn't get a lot to change your class to feel different same rogues don't get a lot to change your class and feel different realistically but uh consumed by rage every time you're in rage you get 25 percent melee damage for 12 seconds that's ridiculous 25 percent damage on on that that's crazy right that's and just like stack a that with flagellation too yeah and then 25 more percent exactly yeah. that's no that's that in itself Busted, and then you generate 25% more rage for all damage you do with is is one of the bottom ones, but I wouldn't even go with that. Um, I would go with I would go with like while dual wielding, your physical damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. Yep. There you go. That's 60% damage. Imagine a, a classic warrior with 60% extra damage. Yeah, I think I, I think towards you know later phases, towards the end, they're gonna be pretty strong yeah. um they're and gonna again, be the worst damage like, at level 25 i think to be honest yeah yeah i, think, I don't i think they're literally gonna be bottom very bottom shadow priest yeah. right above them worst two in the right in the, in the whole thing shadow i don't know actually i don't warrior. know how shaman dps is so i can't speak on that but yeah shaman dp i mean no i mean warrior and then priest shadow priest worst two yeah i don't know how ferals are yeah. either so that's yeah. why i, didn't, I mean I didn't warrior's gonna be down there it, just because you know like you guys were saying before that like in, in you know, regular 2019 classic, like Warrior was the only class you did have mm -hmm. buttons to press. And now every class has buttons to press for the most part, right? And so, some just have crazy ass buttons to press. Yeah, exactly. They, but they, I do they think really towards, do. yeah, higher levels, they're going to scale pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I guess it also depends on how long the fights are too. Like, I don't know how long these fights are, if it's anything that, you know, what we can dictate from the what we tested. Granted, when we tested, we had doo-doo gear. It was not even remotely close to what we would call Priebus or whatever, but... Pretty decent. No, it was ass. It wasn't even remotely close to what we had. But like our previous list we make off 60s is like twice as much stamina. Like, I don't know, like 80% more mana, stuff like that. You ever look at the gear, it was just like int gear. Stamp. Well, for me, it was. I guess I was a caster. You were in the melee. So from the caster yeah, point of view, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was ass. Like warlocks aren't going to stack int and fucking spirit, right? Mages aren't going to stack int and stam, you know? So like it just wasn't modified the right way. But it's not a big deal. It was just for testing. And I'm glad it was because you don't want to blow through that, right? Like the shorter the fights are, some classes will just get better or worse. Yeah. Depending on how long it is, right? Mage is a big yeah. mage is a very big one on that. If, if it's the links of the fights felt like look, it's a they felt like a raid boss. They felt it like did. they tuned it for for the lengths of the fights to be like a raid boss length, mm -hmm. which will obviously get mm -hmm. shorter as we get all of the the raid loot itself as well. Um, but even then, like it doesn't even from looking at the raid loot, it's not like it's ridiculously stronger than open world loot, um, at least so far. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the big um, thing. I'm glad you said that it, yeah. it felt the bosses felt like a raid boss. It did not feel like a harder boss, but a harder dungeon boss, if that makes sense. Like it didn't just feel like we just fought a dungeon boss. that was buffed a little bit. It actually felt like a raid encounter, which is cool. Yeah. Brand, and awesome. all it was all new mechanics. It was nice to figure it out. It was it was, it was it, I, that was important. I was like, oh, it's just going to be a buff BFD with more bosses, you know? And we couldn't even see four of the bosses. There's seven total. We only saw three. Like they showed, one like they group, showed us, which is nice. But. One group found a way to glitch out and summon themselves back in and progress through through to other bosses. I believe. Um, well, really? Cool. Yeah. One group. One group. One group in a guild that's going to be going for world first. Um, apparent. I think found a way to to fight 
picks of the bosses. So uh, shame on you, that group. <laughs> That's not going to share any information. Challenge accepted. I think we'll sit on uh, that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that group is going to beat your group. No, I'm team on beat till death. <laughs> Don't sleep. It, well, we got a full 10 man raid with like 25 mob tigers. that used to get to 25 and then go in the raid. Don't, you should know not to underestimate Ampi's fucking sweatness. And tell someone dethrones, I'm never going to not believe in him. Fearless leader, God almighty, in my opinion. You know, I was having this conversation yesterday. Um, the idea that Ampi wouldn't even agree that any of the groups he's put together would stand a chance against a sweaty EU guild. That doesn't you matter. That, Why right? do you always fucking bring EU in this? No one gives a shit about the <laughs> EU guilds. You always bring that in there. No one. I mean, that's not what this is about. That wasn't an EU guild at BlizzCon doing what you're saying right now either. No, so this, this is literally out of the whole NA. fucking conversation of it. We but don't know the if there's only sweaty NA because we have a lot. There's always sweaty NAs. What do you mean? How do you know if there's no sweaty NAs? We haven't even launched the fucking game yet, Sark. Because there's there's only one sweaty NA in Classic. Well, I don't know. I only know is uh, the game's not out yet, so you don't know what's sweaty yet. Nobody knows. You don't even know where to get a fuck. You don't even know where to get one fucking rune yet. We don't know anything. Nobody knows anything, bro. Married couple, ar married couple arguments. Together. Yeah, we are married couple arguments. These are best friend arguments. You should see us in person. It's even worse. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I'm, all I'm saying is that that group is going to have a massive advantage. Um, but I do know that there is going to be a group of some of the best players coming together as well as world first retail players playing uh, going for it. So it'll be a, a very fun and interesting thing. You think there's going to be a boss where people are just stuck on for a little bit? I, yeah, who just, I don't, I, I it's, it's cringe to me to even hear the word world first in a BFD and speed running in BFD. I don't ever want to hear those words, but it's going to happen <laughs> regardless. You know, it's going to happen. When I saw the Warcraft log person post and say Warcraft logs is going to support BFD. I actually cringed inside. It was crazy. <laughs> it was fucking gross. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like, what, what is there to do and what's there to be excited about once you're playing, right? Like you're going to, it's all planning for, well, I think all of the brackets are going to have their own, like, it's like this own little ecosystem, right? It's, it's finding out what little events you can care about and have fun doing like the beta where it's like, can 25 level 25s go and kill like Onyxia or something. You're going to try and do something crazy, right? And, and that's where a lot of the fun and community aspect happens in classic when you're capped out at this limitation of level to see where you can go with it and one of those limitations or or like one of those avenues will be going for things quickly um it doesn't really matter because the raid is it's i don't think at level 25 we're gonna have anything that's like a challenging boss encounter by far but eventually i think we do get a i think the some of the new raids are going to be tuned really hard and i think that's going to be pretty cool actually um I don't think no Eventually. one's going to give a fuck about PvE at level 25, and it's going to be all PvP. That's all most of the majority of the world, I think, is going to care about. These tournaments coming up that you know about, and then some other shit, just the, getting the runes and the duels and the Ashenvale and the, the BGs. That's yeah. all. I don't hear all besides. We're PvE Andes, so we like the raid, but a majority of everybody from my chat, anyone's chat, all they're talking about is the PvP. Yep. Like the BFD is cool and everything, but it looks like this. We're going to get to 25 quick. You're going to clap out BFD whenever your guys' guild claps it out, and then it's just straight PvP zone whatever the hell I don't even still don't even understand what's going on in the Ashenville stuff yet. That's like all anybody's it's talking about. Rally. Yeah, that's all anybody is talking about. Even as a PV and a, yeah, it's like, it's, it's a level it's 25, 10 man BFD. It's cool. Once you're going to go through that once, maybe twice and be like, all right, well, I'm over this. You know what I mean? Well, you know, you're just going to be able to level up more characters to be able to yeah. then PvP. Yes, yeah, so it's exactly what I tell everything. people, too. Like, if people are like, oh, I'm going to get, like, people, you've seen it, too. I'm sure both of you guys have people talking shit in comments. Like, oh, it's just lame. 25, what are you going to do? You yep. go again with another character. But if you're one of those people who just, I like, if you say you play, you know, a rogue, and you're just like, I only want to play a rogue. I don't want to do nothing else and I PvE, then you might be a little bored, you know? But yeah. that's when you have to it's gonna be phase one, take gonna a be chance to play months. a new class because a lot of these classes changed drastically a warlock is nothing remotely close to what it is in classic now you know i don't you know shadow priest is nothing close to what it is in classic now there's some classes that change like drastically from what you would you're used to seeing you know so now's the time to play something new if you want to yep, hunter yeah, hunter I mean, looks like time, it's completely different everything. too yeah me too that's it's not, not well not everything because i don't give a fuck about like warriors i don't like priests <laughs> very much that's yeah, I, don't, play, but. I don't like warriors and, <laughs> and paladins and shamans no offense for all those that play them but i just they're 
They've just always been like the most boring three to me for some reason. Which is ironic because Warriors are definitely not boring. Really? Warrior? Is boring? I just, I don't know. I said, wow. seven, 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 seven. It's not, no, it's not boring. I, I don't know why I said that because that's what I said. It's ironic because Warriors not boring to play. I just don't want to. Oh, okay, it's not yeah. my cup of tea. Melee, I'm a cash Randy. I'm, I'm not a. I play a warrior a little bit in Lich King, got over it real quick. I'm not, I just don't care about melee. I'm just a big pumper caster. I like to, even healing, I like healing too. I've tried tanking, you, I'm just not a big tanking fan. What do you guys think are going to be the strongest classes in PvP? Warlock. I would say Warlock, Rogue, yeah. yeah war, I, I honestly, you, I don't think anybody can talk me out of this. I don't think anything can fuck with them. I think anything with the meta Warlock, if you have that meta rune, it's going to be hard. I think mages can fuck with Warlocks because we don't have Fell Hunter, so we don't have Spell Lock. We also don't have Charm. We have Succubus, but we don't have Charm yet. That's a 26. We're talking about 25, not level 40, by the way. 25, it's going to be very hard to for anybody to stop in a full emulate Corruption Agony, 500% armor, and I'm spamming free casting Searing Pains on you the whole time. Yeah, and with the Voidwalker Sacrifice. Yeah, with the free dot on there, with the Voidwalker mm -hmm. Sacrifice, you can you have enough points for Feldom too if you want, if you really wanted to get sweaty. I cannot, not just fucking Warlock Cope, I cannot see a lot of people fucking with that. Melee, that's 500 percent armor. You already know. I don't need to tell you that. But like, I think a mage is the closest thing to it. Maybe Shadow Priest. I'm not sure because Shadow Priest. We don't have our Fell Hunter. And that's like a big. I can't spell lock. I can't get the sheep off me. I can't purge you. I can't do anything without my Fell Hunter. And that's the kryptonite of a mage. I don't have any of that. So it's just a battle between can I put four dots up and searing pain spam you? What are you going to counter spell? Are you going to counter spell my fear? Or are you going to blanket my fire? Like you don't. You are, you have those two hot choices, and it's a battle for 24 seconds to see who wins the fight. I think Hunter is phenomenal in PvP. I think that's like right up there too. I think our, I actually now that I just said the word Hunter out loud, I would be hunt, I would be worried about a Hunter as a Warlock. I'm just kind of not because the armor and I have four dots on you and I'm spamming instant cast, instant cast searing pains. Like that's gonna yeah. be you know what I mean. You can't you don't have faint death. You can't. There's nothing that can really help that. Rogues don't have their double vanish. They got their vanish, but they don't have kidney shot. They don't like I'm. I, it's just I don't know. I think it's gonna be really really hard. But yeah, you kind of had kidney shot. I don't know. Kidney shot's not at 25. That's level 26, but you have uh, other things. Yeah, true, but the kidneys, yeah, I think you're right. That if you take... But, but searing uh, pain is grace. melee range? No, the searing pain is not melee range. Shadow no, cleave but, is melee range. Between the eyes is kidney shot, and it's ranged. Oh, okay, 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 so, yeah. So ro rogues, rogues actually get some really, really crazy... Uh, really really crazy runes for pvp the the big thing for warlock pvp against like a melee is that 500 percent armor that's like yep. really strong that's yep. a lot of armor it's gonna reduce I'm, a lot of your damage fire death row is, is gonna be amazing that's I, I think it's gonna be one of the best dps in the game and in pvp it's gonna be really really good because it's just instant tap if you land and incinerate and like we well, don't have conflag yet but that's way down the road don't, don't talk about that but if you can land and you're emulate you're incinerate 25 damage you're like a fires on them and you're fucking slapping them the problem is you don't have charm you have no way to keep them there yeah. in that spot. You need to be able to root them in a spot or unless you did it fast enough in a fear, but you're not going to be able to do that. So that's going to be, so I think you literally, it's just going to be a meta warlock. I think fire will be cool, but it's until you can get something like a charm or unless there's like a, you know, magic just something sleepy wise to do something. I don't know how the fires are going to be great that with, cause there's so much pushback. So a melee, you're just going to have to have meta. Yeah. You would take mass Chandler and center it meta. Exactly. Yeah. But you wouldn't do that. If you're a death row, you would take like, you can sit in the forty percent fire with incinerate twenty five percent, and then you're spamming. It's gonna be fat. I I I'm, I think so. My question, my answer is hunter or warlock. I don't know which of the two. I think in that duel, I feel like a warlock would win, but that could just be me because I'm a warlock. But I think those are the, gonna be the best two DPS. I mean, the best two PVPers. Hammer yeah, dance. I, what do you think? Yeah, I I agree with that, and I also. Again, not just because I'm a little biased towards Warlock, but I do think Warlock with meta. Uh, you know, you do have a uh, charge too, but I'm just reading out about of this combat. Now. I was at, yeah, that's what I was just looking well, at. I was not like, get a lot of value. Kinda, yep. Um, out of combat with only I, a one second stun too. Yeah, I mean, that, to me, if we put up Hunter and Lock together, um, I really do think it would be kind of who gets the jump on who first if it's open world PvP. Uh, I think if Lock can open on on the Hunter with a charge without the Hunter opening first i think it's a wrap right there i don't think anything else happens uh but i again like i said earlier to you guys i i think red pallies are gonna slap in in pvp yeah i, I am just, worried about i forgot about paladins i am a little worried i about mean paladins. you got freedom right i'm pretty sure they have Your bubbles uh, yep they have a rune what's it called uh inspiration exemplar like if you wanted to take that um 
that's just a permanent dispel fear and sleep. Like if you're fighting a lock, like just put that on. Isn't you, that you, you, randomly? We can't sleep you. Doesn't that randomly trigger? Am I? Your, your your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects. Yeah, periodically. I, I'm okay. curious what the actual like how often it, it it happens. If it happens like all the time, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, right? that that would be nuts, right? Or you could take a kick, obviously. Or you take if you're fighting a meta lock, you take Exorcist, and you're 100 percent critting. Yep. Every single time mm -hmm. with that. Um, I don't know. If I had to pick three classes, it would probably be... You get Hodge, uh, really, don't you? As a paladin, yeah, yeah, too? Oh, yeah. yeah, see, that's yep. going to be hard yeah, to get Hodge. a fear off. And you can bubble out of it. and We don't have death coils, stuff like that, yeah. Good point. So put paladin yeah. up there. I'd be, I'm, I'm kind of worried about paladin then as a warlock. I think yeah, I mean, and, and the bigger thing, too, I mean, you have freedom. Like, mm -hmm. you can't be slowed. You can't... Uh, you can just run it. Well, we don't people. slow. <laughs> the slow, that doesn't matter because warlocks aren't slowing shit down. But that, yeah, I am yeah. worried about that because I didn't think about, like exorcist and stuff damn paladins are and the thing is about everybody knows paladins are really good at people they're they're pretty good at those little dual turners that you've seen happen in classic for like the level 20s and the 30s paladins have been very yeah. very good at that already yeah, they, they get so early. much early yeah um i don't i don't know enough uh about shaman pvp to like talk on their behalf I'm not but worried if about I shamans three, ever. yeah i would say hunter pally lock are gonna be uh the strongest in my opinion oh well i mean i'm not worried about shaman as a warlock at least because they're talking with totems can't really do much. Does Shaman have totem stopping? Purge yet? I don't know. I can look at. I don't think so. They get it at so level thirty-two. Requires level twelve. It's level thirty-two. Oh, I see. No, yeah, the the, the removing one is. Level, I looked at rank two. Sorry, yeah. So removing one is level twelve. Yeah. Um, one thing. I mean, I, well, it doesn't matter because it, it'd be like more against like a warlock against like a shadow priest. They could just like spam dispel all of the the dots you put on them. The only one that wouldn't get dispelled would be your curse, right? Um, so shadow priest will be an interesting one to see if it can counter. Mm -hmm. And we don't warlock. have fel and we don't have fell hunter for the for the priest too. That's what I said yeah. earlier. That's that's a rough one to have. No shadow so ward. I think there's going to be a lot more of rock, paper, scissors um, at level 25. A lot more of rock, paper, scissors. But in open world, like when we're in Ashenvale, there's going to be like one thing that's going to be really strong is, well, uh, whoever can hit really hard out of nowhere from range is going to be like crazy or whoever can like kill you really fast. Yeah. Mainly because when you're in a battleground, right, a lot of times, unless it's a, an organized group, a lot of times like that ranged pump damage is is one of the things that just like literally destroys everyone and that's why i think hunter is going to be really fun um because you could just like shadow meld for a second someone's capping a point or something and then you just aim shot them with 30 percent crit hit them right afterwards with a multi-shot that's also got 30 percent crit and 25 percent extra mm -hmm. damage um you'll just like kill things really fast i think yeah, it's, gonna it's, be, it's gonna be crazy to see like a hunter yeah. like a hunter or a warlock and you don't catch them coming at you like that and they're allowed to just free full pump fire or do what oh, you said yeah. with hunters that's gonna be nasty but also don't sleep on mages too no one's mentioning mages but they get their ice lance they get their shit they get that they get that pvp stuff that they need which is really fucking good for them yep they're gonna do great and they have a lot of their toolkit that they need they don't have like frost armor and stuff yeah, that's but they, true. i mean uh, about it. uh ice barrier or nothing like that or block but they have yeah they don't have block which makes it like when you're fucking up a mage guess what pisses you off when they ice block and when you get them down again guess what pisses you off cold snap ice block they don't have any of that but they do have counter spell which helps them a little bit so they're kind of just i don't know i'm kind of i don't know how they're gonna do you don't you have enough points if you go into Frost to get one point in Shattered, that's not helping much, so it's like, I don't know. I feel like the healing side of mages will be all right, more helpful in PvP, like in a group setting, than them just slapping out. I think little 25 Smurf rogues are going to have a good time, too. Um, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can close the gap with Shadow Strike. You just need to get a re-stealth. You have a ranged kidney shot. You have a ranged slow also right like you literally that could slow is dope a, a ranged slow out that you could use all the time right it's giving you combo points and it's a 50 percent slow from range like you don't even then need to put on crippling poison because you can control when your crippling poison comes out you don't need to go with shiv because you can literally control when your when your crippling goes out or you can go with a 40 energy backstab which is uh, yeah, that was, well, even like that if you imagine a rogue life. opening up on you, my first reaction is the coil most of the time or charm. And I don't have either of those. Don't the rogues of rogue, yeah, rogues are gonna be spicy. I think BGs are gonna be an absolute 
blast. I'm more excited for like Warsung Gold just than I am the Asheville shit for some reason. I don't know why. Warsung Gold yeah. tournaments. It, yeah, dude, it's gonna be somewhat. I Wars, I love BGs. I wish they would have put rated RBGs in a long time ago. I just BGs are so much fun. Like an incentive yeah. to do them would be dope. And uh, it, they're always just so much fun, especially as a warlock. They're always really fun, and with no matter what spec you take, and all the like. Imagine being a rogue and going through there, and just like nothing can get away from you now. That feeling when you get slowed as a rogue, and they're just like, no, they're just out of your grasp. That's no longer <laughs> existent anymore. Yep, you literally can stop yeah. them at all. Yeah. Like, and that, that's crazy. like the the big pitfall of rogue, right? Is to just be permanently kited. We even saw it with the 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 tournament, right? With the Makara tournament, all of the tournaments, it's always been either the rogue wins or or they get like. There's, it's really a, a chess match, right, against the rogue, especially rogue mage. It's like whoever uses all of their CDs first gets it does win. And basically, once you run out of things, the rogue can never catch you. It's over. The rogue just can't catch you, and that's not an issue anymore. And that's like a big defining point that changes the way that rogue PvP is going to be played. I think we're going to see some crazy people like Bobka, Perplexity come back and do some like ridiculous stuff with rogue. Um, Feral Druid, I think, is going to be a relatively strong one also i think like it's interesting to see that all of the classes get a lot more like every version of the different specs like i would be intrigued to see like boomkin boomkin leveling you have literally free mana wrath so you'll never have to stop while leveling right so like balance will have a good time um enhanced our ellie shamans are used to one-shotting people so like once we're higher levels they can also just one-shot people even harder uh, <laughs> yeah i don't know how drew is i don't know i i i don't know shit about him i don't know how they're gonna look i don't know how any of it works um i don't know if you guys do i think obviously hammer does he did a druid video right you want to touch on him druid or shaman druid we have a slot like on the one we haven't talked about. I, I don't know how they're looking. I don't know if the, I know Resto Druid looks phenomenally. I love Resto Druid. It's my, one of my favorite healing. That looks that looks dope. But in, term, in terms of the DPS, how does it? In terms of the DPS, I mean, so you obviously you're bringing Wind Fury. You have Wind Fury. You have Mangle. Um, you have Savage Roar, which is enormous. You know, if anyone here has played a thirty percent damage, game, yeah, like it's it's humongous. Um, so you're gonna have a thirty percent damage buff constantly. You have Mangle. Um, which is going to buff your warrior's damage and your rogue's damage. Um, and then Wind Fury, yeah. The thing is, the talents are kind of weak. Uh, this is what I was struggling with when yeah. I was making my guide on them. Um, and there was a lot of, like, I got into, I actually got into some pretty good conversations, like, in the comments, like, getting ideas from other people as well. Um, but you would generally go... Like, it's tough because if you look, I don't know if you guys have it up, but if you're looking at the Feral Tree, the first uh set of talents is kind of whack because your ferocity or feral aggression like are, are not going to benefit your dps at this level at all um like literally at all so you're basically wasting 10 points to go down right you go into get um sh to get to sharpened claws so once you get to sharpened claws uh that's when you could start actually getting damage out of this but then i was having someone tell me that maybe it's better to go into like the resto tree sure you go for 100 percent yeah one million percent it, it's it's so that you can shift power shift into cat and you get 40 energy free every time you do that right it's it, it is it would be big, uh, yeah so so that's what i was struggling with so that would be more dps than going down into um like to get to sharpened claws yes yeah yeah, yeah. like you you can't really get far into sharpened claws right like yeah, you get i mean you could points, i think it you, was Technically, you, I guess if you don't go Fuhrer at all, you can get three points into Sharpened Claws. But, like, it's just really... Fuhrer is... It, that is so, so good um, for you. So you're going to want to go down and get that for sure. The thing is, yes, I think... Barrel Druid doesn't have like that... It doesn't come fully online yet. Uh, yeah. That's, that's they the had thing swipe, that they're missing. Things would be a little bit different. I feel like they would just be insane on Trash, but... Yeah, so if you go Fuhrer, yeah, you can't even get down to Blood Frenzy. Because that's where I was originally going with it. And then I rethought it, and I'm like, yeah, this is right. Like, you would go Fuhrer. Um, but I don't know. There was just part of me that felt like take going down into Sharpened Claws and getting a point in Blood Frenzy would be a good amount of damage. But I'm not sure on that. I haven't played a lot of uh, classic uh, Feral Druid. Feral Druid, yeah. Fuhrer is, like, one of your, like, quintessential 
uh it's it's like every like shifting power shifting is like one of the quintessential things for for feral Druid. the thing is i i think feral Druids also resemble a little bit of like their wrath rotation where you have basically slice and dice which is savage roar giving you 30 percent extra damage it is really really strong but like you'd have to get that up it i think that i'm not sure and, and i think i'm going to be proved very differently and proved wrong but in in pvp if you're going for like a raw feral damage build it's like a ramp like ferals are, are a ramping spec usually they ramp up their damage so you add like bleeds and stuff and you ramp up uh so it's going to be interesting but that ramping also i believe might ignore armor someone's going to have to correct me with this and I'll, I'll ask Grifton. um but that ramping might ignore armor, which would put them strong against like the the warlock situation in a PvP battle. But I don't see them as like coming out of nowhere and just like deleting people. Yeah, yeah. and I mean them. next, you know, next phase they'll come online a little bit more because then they'll be able to get the helmet. Uh, yes, the helmet. very much so. So that combined with Fuhrer, obviously, like you'll have full power shifting going on there. And like level forty, a lot of people, everybody's that's your final shit right there too. Yeah. Bro, that's that's the ice block. That's the soul link. That's you know that's the bottom thing for everybody, right? Yeah, I mean between getting that, between getting that helmet, and if they you know maybe in the next phase we'll get a swipe rune there, like that would make me play feral. I feel like it'd be a lot of fun because I played it in wrath um, and I had an absolute blast with it. Uh, but I think if they get swipe and they get to forty to be able to equip that helmet and like take full advantage of power shifting, I think that would be nutty with savage roar and wind fury like. And they'll, they'll, these talents now yeah. they'll be so yeah if you if you have that and you're just like whenever you're out of energy you can just shift and get 60 energy back or whatever and and you can just do it again um yeah. it, it's gonna be yeah it's it's gonna be really really good so uh, druids are gonna ramp up druids are in a class or in a place where i think feral is gonna ramp up boomkin i think would be more of so an ass what about boomy yeah for um for pvp also for leveling boomkin like literally has a town uh, like one of those runes makes it so your wrath legitimately costs zero mana mm -hmm. so you can never ever go um you literally just can continue continuously kill things um so yeah i think it's fury of the storm age there it is uh yeah. it, it's it's like that's crazy so that one is is really fun um and I think that also leads it to like in a one v one situation, you can continuously do that and then get like these instant cast uh, heals yeah. off all the time. So it is it's really good for PvP. I think they're really good in like a dueling situation, and you could play between moving in and using like this like like the build that you usually do right is like you whittle druids are always about whittling people down and having these long prolonged fights it's like usually the druid way of doing things it it, it really is healing touches so much mana yeah but you're not spending mana on most of your other things that's like the the trade-off but i i, I yes it is um so it, it's going to be interesting to see what druid pulls out i think the fun of these these theory crafting and putting together what the different builds could be is where like you're gonna see like chan and snuts come up with some crazy thing that you're just gonna be like i didn't think about putting those together at all and then it's gonna become the meta very quickly i think um, the fun of it is that nobody knows anything and even chan and snuts are gonna go and they're not knowing nothing when it comes up to day two and day three because everyone's still trying to figure it out if this is why i hope that all, all the runes are found because of tournaments coming up right i hope that all the runes aren't found by then so you're like oh shit here's Sarth with every heart, his best hunter runes against Snuts, who was not able to find that meta rune or whatever the fuck, and I will get it. It's like that's the kind of stuff I like because everyone's trying to figure out the meta, right? Or it's speculation when the game comes out, nobody knows yet. Yeah, if you can't, we could be wrong and Shaman just dominates rune. everybody. You know what I mean? We could, for some reason, something could be broken with Shamans and just untouchable. You know, I doubt it, but I'm just saying. I mean, I, I, someone was asking me about that yesterday is like, I, I don't have enough information on Shaman to give an accurate estimation of where they'll be in PVP or PVE. Um, so like there's, there's also going to be like these classes that like, there's some people that are so, so good at it. Um, and they're going to find crazy ways of, of doing things. I think, yeah, but the idea that the game isn't this solved version of a game we've been playing for 20 years is, is the fun yeah. is really the fun. We're going to have the most fun we've had in a long time. That's well, I mean, it's going to be a blast. Talk on Shaman. Do you guys know anything about Shaman Hammer? Have you done your Shaman video? Yeah, so I was working that on that this this morning, actually, and I was, like, messing around. Um, I didn't do touch much on PvP 
stuff. Mm. Um, well, but mm. PVE, I, I do think that uh, Elemental is going to be a little bit better than Enhancement at this level. But I could be wrong on that. Um, uh, but the way that I'm looking at it, I mean, you, you your Enhancement tree at level 25 is just absolute dog. Like, it is... Yeah really bad you get you get like nothing good there um it's but if you go i've crit yeah that's that's literally all you get um but if you go into ele elemental i mean you can you get uh let's spec it out right now you get five points into concussion right which is just five percent uh increase the damage and then you would take uh three points in call of flame and then uh we can go down into call of thunder you're missing two points. Five, and then we're missing one more point. Yeah, elemental focus. There we go. So, to me, this looking at this build, five points concussion. Uh, I put two points in elemental warding, three in call of flame, five, which is going to give you six percent crit on lightning bolt and chain lightning, which is pretty big, and then one point in elemental focus. Like to me, this is the only way shamans are going to do any form of like competitive DPS at level twenty-five. No. Oh, did I drop from the call or something? Oh no, no you're here. We're good. It's on his end. Oh, okay um yeah so to me uh, you go you go elemental if you're trying to dps on a shaman at 25 i could be wrong i could be proved completely wrong but the way that it looks this is how it would be and then obviously you'd take overload for like your instant lightning bolts and uh lava burst of course and uh probably uh shamanistic rage yeah uh so that you just never run out of mana mm -hmm, yeah um, agreed but enhancement i think it's going to take a little bit longer for that to like kind of really come online you're also missing a ton of hit too, so I don't think that it's going to be that great. But again, we, no one, no one really knows. It's all speculation, to be honest. Sarth Rose, leave Colin joining again. Did it work, Sarth? He's still out on my end. Yeah, he can leave and come back. It should work. Your Discord hates you. Um. Well, I mean, it's been almost two hours. That's about. Did you have something else that you want to talk about, Sarth, in there? Or you as well, Hammer? Because we're going to do a part two where we go over classes more and do a tier list, unless you wanted to do it today. No, we could save that for a part two, man. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask about mage healing. Um, obviously, well, if you didn't know, mage healing got nerfed pretty substantially, I would say. Um, yeah. Oh, there he is. He's back. Now my face is on your face. Uh, Mage healing got s nerfed pretty substantial nerf to them where they changed their region to the first thing they change is the mana cost of it, right? They made the mana cost decent more on region and it's 43% of your mana base it used to be 21 and then the mass region was changed from where's it at? Uh, it I, I remember it's 21% to 69%. Yeah, it's just like a crazy number. Yeah, yeah it's like 69% of your mana for it right now, too. And then they also changed how much it heals. They oh, changed, right? yeah, it's, it's base mana, which is a big difference because while well, level 25, you won't have that much in it anyway, but yeah, it's the base mana. That's still a shit ton anyway. And then they also make lessen the healing on it that it actually heals per se. And then they actually level, or, and then they nerfed it on the temporal beacon healing. So it used to be 100% of your arcane damage is healing. Now it's only 40% of it. Um, and then on top of that, they made it whenever you put your temporal beacon on somebody, it, you do 50% less fire and frost damage. Um, which and yeah. you can't ice block that's more for pvp yeah. and obviously for later you don't even have ice block right now yeah. uh the nerf, i mean that last part of it is not to me that's not yeah. that big of a deal because you'd be just doing casting, arcane damage. exactly yeah yeah the biggest thing is the temporal i think the temporal beacon but you have to remember mages will be doing a lot of damage especially if there's a spamming i think that that 100 to 40 percent that's like that was needed if you're letting mages heal for 100 percent of the damage they're doing that's a, a lot of damage, right? They're yeah. going to be doing decent damage. I don't think they're going to be topping all the time or like, I don't think they're top three or nothing, but I think they're definitely going to be doing a lot of damage. And for them to heal 100% of that, that's kind of needed. Uh, the mana cost is an issue. I think at level 25, at least, once you get up to 50, 60, that's a little bit different, right? Because you have a lot of it now. Um, but it goes into the thing where like I'm, the best sets I have for mage is more like I have where on a warlock, I'm sitting there using all fire damage or all shadow damage, right? Or then some tanking, right? Then I have all, all agi gear and agi enchants on versus like, the mage said I had to work I'm in, in spirit, right? You want to go stack fire or frost or arcane plus damage, whatever you can get, but you can't because you're like, I need my spirit. I need my int. Yep. So that's kind of the balance you have with that. But it also depends on how short the fights are. I think mage is the most unknown in terms of everything for me right now because it's like, not unknown. I know what I'm talking about with it, but like, you don't know. Like, we don't know how short the fights are. That's like the big 
big for them right now because you're that's a whole different gear set of gear you can use i don't think the healing is going to be giga healing i don't think it's i think it'd be a cool dungeon healer or something i don't think this is going to be like in my opinion it's like why would you bring a mage to a 10-man raid to heal when you could just bring a priest a holy paladin you know shaman whatever because the rest of is going to do great you know wrestle dude got a damn almost a damn near rework it feels like flow stuff like that i think they're gonna be phenomenal so like why would you bring the mage healer instead of just let him blast you know what i mean because they wanted to play mage healer which, which you there, can't just put there them are, in though. a box <laughs> well they, there are but there's a lot of people who are like they don't understand why the mage healing mages heal in lore which is why i think they did that um but a lot of people a lot of the mages are like i, I want to pump like i have living bomb i have living flame yeah. i have icy veins i have all this other stuff that i can do you know, and just the Arcane fans are f freaking out because they get Arcane Blast, right? They're like, oh, shit, we get Arcane Blast, you know? But I think people sleep on the fact that the Arcane Blast is d very different, whereas this is every other damage, right? You increase each time you deal damage of the damage and healing of all other Arcane spells is increased. Yeah. Where instead of it being your Arcane Blast increased, right? So it's a four dump, four dump, four dump. It's going to be really fun to see how how the meta changes with like mage has a lot more intricacy now whereas if you played mage in classic the meta for mage literally like no joke in raids was to be an arcane mage that used shadow bolt or sorry frost Damn. frost bolt yeah and you just <laughs> sat there sorry i'm used to both of these classes having one ability to use um and you just sat there and you and you would just like use your frost nice. bells but you just press one button right and you had one cd technically and then you just use your cd and then makes it so that your frost spell does more right yeah. so now you have a lot more of a rotation which is cool i think lore wise it's interesting um i didn't even know like like from lores and the books and stuff that mages were healers i think within the they could heal it was the like they game, can heal they had the ability to heal I think within the confines of the game, the, the the biggest change that actually technically makes the most sense within the confines of the game was rogue tank because rogues tanks is a thing, right? Even, I guess, even shaman tank, shaman yeah, tank, shaman. like people would force shaman tank. So like both of those were a thing where like it's already, people were already doing them. Um, rogue tanking is like the safest way to do Resuvius in hardcore, right? It's like literally like the safest way to do it. Like it's, it's, it can be the safest way to deal with some of the patchwork mechanics, right? So, um, well, we're all tank makes sense. The reason they put meta in the game in Lich King is because it was going to be a tank and then they changed their mind last minute and made it just a DPS. That's why there's so much armor on it. Really? Yeah. That's why meta was put in the game that. in the first really? place. I didn't know game. that at all. Yeah. And then Mage, Warlock's tank, how many different bosses? So I, I think it makes perfect sense that they finally let them actually be a tank. I hope yeah. that all three of those new tanks, whether it's Shaman, Rogue, Warlock, can... I hope they're good. I don't want them to be like, a, oh, tank some a couple pieces of trash or you get one clapped, yeah. which I don't think they will because we already know that the survivability of ours is going to be great on all of them. They have all other different toolkits to make them survive, whether you're avoidance, whether you're dodging, whether, you know, whatever it is. So I hope they're in... That when I asked them, they said they're revival tanks, right? So... They all, yeah, yes. that's the cool thing is especially at level 25, literally everything's viable. Even mm -hmm. this, even Mage mm -hmm. Healer. Mage Healer was really strong before. It would have um, been broken, though. <laughs> it was really, really, yeah, exactly. Like, this it was the first broken. time where you see them rein in things that are broken, right? And, like, mm -hmm. I was mentioning, like, Rhett Paladin and maybe, like, some Hunter runes and maybe some other runes around there are, like, kind of broken right now. Um, I think they reined that in and I think that was a really smart move of them to put them mm -hmm. in line with everything else so that like you can bring it 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 like there's no need at level 25 to to choose the only the best classes to bring to your 25 raid like it's not like a challenging raid and then you're just you're going through having fun with your friends and and you're at like a chill level 25 and then you go and you go in PvP and you level your your alts like you don't have like the nice thing like and and we are the worst at not pertaining to this but the idea that you don't have to know life season of discovery at least early on is really nice the thing is we will yeah um, i'm about to say because you know, that's what we do what we do and because I'm we have like, the time to, to do it in. yeah we have the time to do it that's why it's more like you know what i mean but i think it's a com it's comfy for anybody if you just have the normal nine to five and you have a couple hours to play at the end of the day it's not going to take yeah. you a month two months to hit the cap level to play which is dope and then when they do raise it and whenever that you have 15 more levels to get and then 10 more levels to get and so it's really nice but i do yeah, agree it's gonna you, be I think, like oh, easily accessible stuff mm -hmm. you know yeah. like let's say you have friends that are like they're gonna come back and play right like super casual like they just want to play to 25 with you like 
everything in this is super accessible right a 10-man raid so you can experience like the raid with like casual friends or like world pvp that's like the clat like one of the best things about you know classic era or like the vanilla world mm -hmm. um and warsong gulch like that's like that's what people did back then like that was you jumped into warsong gulch with your friends and you just had a blast like i think that the like the casual aspect of this is like actually the selling point for most people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think that i think if i could give one advice to everybody is to not be that meta chaser it's going blind to the game and season of discovery just discover some shit this is coming from someone yeah. all three of us who are making videos on this shit just ignore them yeah, don't play stay off everybody. reddit stay off class discords and start their muted stay off class discord oh. stay off everything and just like go out there take your time to level whatever enjoy the game as it is because if you speed rush this shit you're gonna be done in a day or two and then you're gonna be like oh this this is trash i have nothing to do unless you're you know you're gonna pvp or something but just enjoy it you don't need to watch videos don't leave yeah. the discords alone it's not it, it, the game is you kind of know the game all they do is add a rates to pvp but they change your favorite class whatever I it is I they change your favorite class and that's important <laughs> um, to know and just discover so that shit man yeah, I mean, I've I've got a lot of comments of people being like, "Oh, a good thing you made a video. Now there's nothing left to discover. This and that." I'm like, "You don't have to watch in, it. You still have to find all these runes. Yeah. You still, we still don't know. We don't know everything. You know that's in trust. Um, that's a normal comment you'll get all the time. Anyway. Yeah, you'll get haters um, and, like that all the time. Just ignore that. And, and the 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 so like, I just know that some of the runes are going to be changed, right? So like everything will always be changed so there's no harm in like obviously discussing what you think is going to be the best what what are going to be like the ways to play or like what what talents are going to be you're going to want to run because you want to have like some plan going in and, and be able to look out for that it's always very helpful right there's no meta yet and there's no meta that you need to copy anyways at level 25 it's level 25 mm -hmm. at level 60 yeah eventually once you get into 40 man raids there is an inherent like if there's 40 people and if we have 40 man raids inherently there's meta classes that you stack that's a literal like it doesn't matter you have so many there's only a limited amount of classes and there's 40 people um and there is where like there your feral druids are having a good time because every melee group wants to have a feral druid right well you also you get, don't you need to stack and though. you get wind fury yeah you don't need the speed to. running you do i mean when your situation yeah you do what you were doing but a, a large majority a overwhelmingly a majority well, of the community you, you don't need to stack a thousand warriors you can play whatever the fuck you want especially now no but yeah. what I'm saying is you can't not like at that level because of how limited the amount of classes and stuff is with 40 people inherently you need to bring multiples of something um so like but it doesn't like nothing needs to be forced yet right like you don't need to force a meta and everything's gonna be fun I I think Warzone Gold PvP is just like I'm just excited to yep. like play basically yep. a twink that's gonna yep. be a lot of fun are you do you guys hope there's gonna be 40 man race or do you want them to be like 20 25 or whatever I do not like, I don't like 40 man raids. This is a known thing. It's one of my biggest turnoffs of classic is 40 men. See, I, I enjoy 40 man raids. Yeah. Um, uh, to me, it's like super nostalgic. It's just a nostalgia thing, you mm -hmm. know? Um, going to, I mean, the difference between 25 and 40 man raid is really like, if you think about 40 man raids in vanilla, like with a normal casual guild, think about clearing Molten Core or like AQ or not AQ, I would say Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. Um, it was basically like, 20 to 25 people carrying you know 15 more casual players um and i think that going down to 25 is, is just it makes it more streamlined right like where it just feels a little bit better but the 40 man raid to me is like iconic for like classic era yeah i, I think know. that's that's it feels very classic to have like one person that always walks into something or forgets yeah, their totems yeah. or something you know exactly it's just, yeah. it's just like the epitome of the classic feeling and I, I i'm excited and i think that's like i mentioned it earlier but like that's like the biggest challenge is while adding all this new stuff making us feel like we're playing classic world of warcraft consistently the whole time um is the biggest challenge for like the wow team to do so that it still like tugs at our heartstrings while feeling new yeah nice i was just curious you guys, I, I knew Sarth liked 40 minutes. I was just curious. I just like raiding, man. Yeah. I'm such a I'm such a raid. That's the sad Andy. part like, about I <laughs> love playing the game. I love like finding a new way to do something. I love like testing a new build and like it increasing your damage. I love like when people come up with this like crazy sims that say this is the best, but then you try something and it's like actually a lot better. And then like the sims added in and stuff, and you're like, this is like that 
like trying new things is, is what gets me really excited and like pushing the limits. I'm, I'm a big fan of like pushing the limits. Um, although I'm going to be playing Season of Discovery a lot more casually than I play other versions of WoW, I'm still going to like okay. push the limits. I'm sure you are. You're going to be no life in that shit. <laughs> I know you. You're no life in that. What else are you going to do? Uh, I have nothing until uh, Kata. Let's uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, Lich I King, might, I guess. There's still Lich King, but... I might main other games. Um, That's what I'm doing. I'm on my variety tip, right? I'm loving it. I'm just, I'm just having fun playing other games. Mm -hmm. But this is like... I, I literally was on the verge of like very much like hard like going all in on just playing other games and making videos about other games. Um, such as like I, one of my Spider-Man videos like from last week has like I saw that. almost 4 million views now. And it's like, it's just fun to play other games right now. But this is like, it's so new. It's so like, the it's hard not to be, yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, yeah. super hyped. Yeah. I am kind of worried about, I don't know if it's just me. I just feel like, I know, I hope it's not too long for the next phase because I feel like there's going to be like even if you PVP, there's only so much you can do. I feel like still, like yeah, if you hit yeah, level yeah. twenty five, you PVP. I feel like let's let's call it ten weeks at max to go to the next one. I feel like after a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be a little like all right. Even if you have alt, guy, okay, yeah. unless you're just like in Hammered Dance, for example, he said he wants to play all the classes, which fits him. He can make videos on all of them. That's a little bit different. But then you worry about burnout. It's like a whole thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's something. The reality of it is, b before I level every class, yeah, I will get burnout. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah. I think 10 weeks is, in my opinion, uh, way too long. Yeah, way I too think long. it yeah. needs to be somewhere in the realm of like five to six weeks. Yeah. Well, they, they said six anywhere weeks. from four to 10 weeks. I think yeah. it's going to be, I think it's going to be like six. I, I think yeah. six is, I hope and six. I think six is going to be, I think six is going to feel really long in the first level bracket at 25 and it's going to feel perfect at like 40 and 50. Um, like, I think it's going to feel really, really good at those later ones as it takes you a little bit longer to hit those level gaps. But also, like, the raids are harder. There's more content to do. There's more PvP. And, like, I think it's going to feel more fun. And and I think a big drawing factor, a big thing for, for people is going to be, like, community-driven events mm -hmm. where we host, like, tournaments where everyone, everyone can play in them. And, like, so, like, I think that's going to add a lot of the fun in, in between it. But, like, I think if you go too hard right away... At the level 25 bracket you're gonna burn burn yourself out so i think yeah. it's gonna be fun to like play in a relaxed manner yeah because there's four phases total right now announced right we have this one we have 25 to 40 40 to 50 and 50 to 60. yeah um and then i was talking about this the other day with a buddy like at 60 um we still don't even know what's gonna happen are they gonna like phase release like molten core with changes or like and then yeah, phase release I think so. changes Z, uh, zg like and then new so, raids yeah so we don't really even know how long this season is right it, this could be 12 months or maybe it could be 18 months um so i do think that the timing when releasing the next phase should be like um it, it should vary based on the phase like this phase should definitely be fa faster than the next phase yeah I, I i totally agree i think this should be this the shortest of phases um Definitely the shortest of phases, but I, I'm I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Yes, please be the shortest of phases. Like <laughs> even a month for this phase is like you can level all of the classes and test all of the things, you know. Yep. And then and then at level forty, you can take a little bit more time with it. I'm checking on something so I can show it real quick. Keep, sorry, keep talking. You're good. No, no, no. But yeah, so I, I think that's that's how long it'll be. I think, I think again, I think like the real the real real content really starts when you're level sixty, and when we see like new raids at sixty and stuff. Um, I think them saying that they people will still do the like twenty five man raid in the while you're level forty while you're leveling up. I don't I don't see that's just not the way people play classic. Um, we're yeah. kind of tryhards and we just try to go to the max level and then do it. But I think at level sixty we get all of these new. Uh, like if we get new mechanics, new raids, whilst also having the new builds for the classes, that's where like all of the fun is. And it's like testing yeah. it out. And like the new, like we were mentioning at the beginning of this, right? Like there's data mines potentially for like the new tier two sets for paladins or whatever. Like they're reworking yep. the tier sets for it all. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's going to be huge for a lot of this because like these first four phases are just basically like, you know, kind of stretching out and allowing you to play 
through like classic era in a different way um, with a class that maybe you've been playing for 15 years that now feels totally different, right? So it's a totally new experience. Um, and then, like you just said, when you get to 60, there's like also an entirely, you know, potentially an entirely new end game as well. So I yeah. think that that's like super hype, to be honest. That I'm, I'm so pumped for that. Yo, I just sent you two pictures. I asked only if I can show them. He said, uh, yeah, but make sure it's cool with you. But without the dates, just tease it. I'm teasing it. Yeah, 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 you can tease those. Yeah, you can tease, you can tease those. All right, guys. Look at that, guys. Oh. Top secret. You heard it here first. International dueling tournament. We, yeah, can't, we literally can't tell works. you anything, but we this can show you this. This is in the works. Um, so the idea, the idea is to have a dueling tournament early, right? Before the meta is discovered uh, in each of like the, the level brackets, right? The idea is to have these dueling tournaments early so that like when someone pulls something off it's crazy they, they've discovered like the meta the meta gem or whatever the meta rune early and other people don't have it yet and it also creates this like this secret of like oh my god did you know that that sony has this rune that he found you know um so so international dueling tournament currently in talks with some of the biggest content creators in a couple of the different uh, in the world like, yeah, in the world, in, in the, these that. different regions. The reason it's called an international. And and so it would be played out in these different regions, and then the finales, like after you go through the, the qualifiers, it would all be played out together, um, and people would play against each other. So it is it is in the works. It's a lot of work, um, as these tournaments are, is a crazy amount of work, but it is it is that looking is awesome. really, really dope. Yeah, Hype it so, up. Keep to to be just announce more, just hype us, hype stuff, and get ready for fun and mayhem. Oh yeah, and maybe it won't be Sony and Snus. You don't know who it's gonna be. Nobody knows who it'd be. They might find you. They might pull this game and not find shit. They're so good <laughs> at the game. Yeah, but I it doesn't matter. Like if Snus doesn't find anything. meta, he can't. It's like Snuts. If, if Chan, I don't... Trill, they could play anything, anything, and be so good at it. It's and this is awesome. why I want those runes to be not ever found instantly by everybody because when day four or five comes up and for some reason you can't find meta or for some reason you can't find i don't know name another rune that another class needs and you're just like fuck i, I like there are certain things that classes will need and maybe they can't find them maybe yeah, fucking I joe blow like that, joe blow the paladin nobody knows him at all he doesn't even stream <laughs> he's just like in the tournament and claps everybody out because he got all the runes he needed that's that's the point of the tournament is early before everybody gets the runes and stuff like that yeah, too, like before that. the meta's before the meta's figured out you know it won't take long for the meta to get figured out yeah, the tournament for this one, it'll be like very, 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 very quickly after launch um, working on all of that stuff. But it'll be very, very quickly so that like you don't have very much time to do shit. Uh, that is that is a large part of the point. But yeah, within a few days, all of the runes are discovered for sure. That's just I agree. I hope not, but I agree. It. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, it's going to be it's, it's, like gonna the world is too min maxi not to find him. I seriously really yep. hope not, though. I don't know. I just hope it's like I, I imagine just imagine it's like three in the morning. You got to work the next day. You're like, fuck, I'm trying. I'm just scouring the earth <laughs> doing that gamer scan thing you do with your mouse when you're going like this until your tool tip gets popped by something. Hoping you can find something to pop up on your tool tip. I think it's going to be dope. Yep. But at the same time, you know where to find videos from us. If you need to find them, you know it's going to be there. As soon as I find everything on my Warlock, it's getting posted. So, Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to not be spoiled, then stay away from our channels, all right? <laughs> but at the same time, if you want more content, you know where to find everybody. Do you want to close on that? Do you want to? We're doing another episode in two days. Yep. Or do you want to wait till Monday? I know you're weekend. Monday. Okay. I, have, I have wife aggro all weekend. Okay. My birthday is Tuesday. So uh, Monday, it has to be done Monday. Hell Tuesday yeah, and then Thanksgiving. Um. Oh, and then we have then we're back after season discovery. We get to play the game the next week. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're here. Yeah, everybody, look up at the Is top the next, of the screen and follow day Summer. To, day? Yes. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah. go. I think the next episode, I would like to go like pull up the rune list and maybe we touch on each rune briefly and what it means. Maybe. I honestly think by then we might see some changes to runes. So that'll be a. If not, then we'll give like 
a lot more accurate of a of a tier list because since we've seen already some mage changes i think they're looking into things so yeah um, oh and it's speculation a, a too you already know sarth and i do some spicy ass tier lists and we don't agree on shit so this is going to be a lot of fun <laughs> Yeah, and Hammer Dance right. will be our okay. Hammer Dance will be our middleman. He's definitely not always right, and he doesn't want me to tell you guys this, but his fucking dread is a wig. It's not even real hair, so just know that <laughs> it's fucking fake hair. All right. Um, but Hammer Dance, you want to say where to find you everywhere, my friend? Yeah, uh, on YouTube, Hammer Dance Gaming, and uh, on Twitch right here as just Hammer Dance. If you find another Hammer Dance on YouTube, it is me, but it's not a gaming channel. If you need help setting up OBS and stuff, that's the channel you use. <laughs> that's fucking Funnily good. Enough, I'm actually going to ping you for stuff. That's so funny. <laughs> Sarth, you're... Is this Sarth or is it Sarth Gaming on YouTube? Uh, Sarth, yeah, obviously, guys, you, you know where to find me. Uh, it's just Sarth. Sarth everywhere. So. Technically, I think it's Sarth TV on, on X... Extreme. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's just Sarth. Uh, actually, no. It actually, it might be Sarth TV. To be honest, on YouTube, I think somebody actually got Sarth. If you just uh, if you just YouTube Sarth, you'll, you'll find him. Yeah, who yeah, Sarth ever heard of him? Yeah. Paul Brainard. That's who has it, and he has one video, thirteen years ago. I don't want to talk about who has Cricks. I can never get it anywhere. <laughs> Fucking crazy. I didn't figure out how to how to do this. I've messaged That's... him before too. I'm about to offer some money to the guy or something. I don't know if this guy sees his emails. Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. We're gonna get. We'll have this posted sometime this weekend on all three channels. So keep luck. Once again, check out Hammer Dance's channel. He's the best. I, he's one of the best ones out there right now, if not the best. I think he was the first one to touch it. He actually puts in. It's the YouTube is full of everybody. Uh, not everybody, but a lot of people just spamming content out that don't know what the fuck they're talking about and just trying to give views. He's one of the ones who's actually like doing the research on the classes and you can tell right not just there's the a lot of misinformation Bro, there, there is so <laughs> many people crazy. just literally talking about whatever to do whatever and that's okay get your name out there however you want but like i respect him so i respect you dog you're actually putting effort in not just the editing just like i can tell you're doing the research on it right you don't play all these fucking classes but you sound like you do and that's how you know you're actually doing the research whether that be class discords or theory crafting or whatever it is and that's that's the good shit you know what i mean yeah thank you man yeah, yeah i'm enjoying it too that's 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 the most important important yeah. part to me uh, i'm having a blast i've loved this game pretty much my whole life so this is mm -hmm. this is fun i love to see it bro you literally used to watch the immersion videos so i fucking i literally was like i saw <laughs> I your first video you and i was like those. oh shit that was dope and then it's like background noise i'd put in background noise when i do a video or something like that yeah and i was yeah. like and then you made another one and when i realized you're doing the class guys i was like oh yeah this guy's dope let's go i'm ready and i'll watch it while i'm like because that's why I, I don't know about all the classes i just kind of obviously cast your pigeon hold pigeon hold but like a, the yeah. hunter one or like a rogue one i'll watch it and be like oh, okay that's cool you know and of course yeah. there's like scotty j out there who obviously is amazing we love scotty j we're gonna try to get him on next week too um, oh yeah you two i feel like you two are just carrying sod content right now i love it you know so thanks for awesome. coming on bro thank i appreciate you. you bro thank yeah. you so much thank you guys for having me i, I this was so good i'm very pumped i'm yeah. super pumped for this sorry i fucking love you doug I'll yeah love you guys host. have a good weekend yeah. everybody and, peace uh, guys